Hi, and welcome to our video for 14.2, The Gas Laws. But first, we're going to take a look at what's called Boyle's Law. And that states that if the temperature is held constant as the pressure of a gas increases, the volume decreases. All right, so as the pressure increases, the volume decreases or vice versa as the pressure decreases the volume increases and that's what's known as inversely proportional okay so we could say something like the pressure is equal to some constant over the volume but the way you guys need would need to know it would be pressure 1 times volume 1 is equal to pressure 2 times volume 2. Right? And if you look at a graph here, as we see volume increasing, right? volume increases this way, pressure is decreasing. As volume decreases that way, pressure is increasing. All right, so how does this work? Let's say we have to convert 338 liters at 63.0 atmospheres to its new volume at standard pressure. All right, so if you look on your reference table, you'll see STP, standard temperature and pressure, is going to be a pressure of one atmosphere. <clears throat> All right, so here's how I want you to set these up. Our formula is... P1 V1 equals P2 V2. So first we write down the formula. And now we got to figure out what all these P's and V's are. So pressure 1, V1, P2, V2. All right, so pressure 1 is 63 atmospheres, 63.0 atm. V1, 338 liters. Pressure 2, right, standard pressure, so 1 atmosphere, and its new volume, that's what we have to figure out. So we need to solve for V2. Alright, so we want to get the V2 by itself right up front. So if we divide each side by P2, it cancels out here, divided by P2, we end up with V2 equals P1 V1 divided by P2. And now we're ready to plug in numbers. 63.0 atm times V1, 338 liters, divided by P2, 1 atmosphere. So our atmospheres cancel. We end up with 63 times 338. 63 times 338 and we are going to end up with 21,294 liters. Nice and easy. All right, Charles Law. As the temperature of an enclosed gas increases, so as temperature increases, the volume increases if the pressure is kept constant. Okay? And that is directly proportional because they both go up together. And the graph of that is a straight line. So our formula, V1 over T1, we can write it like this, V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. All right, so let's give this a try. We're going to have to figure out V1 equals T1 equals V2 equals T2 equals. So our V1 is 6 liters. Our T1, 27 degrees Celsius. Well, now here's the little kick. Okay? We have to use Kelvins, not degrees Celsius. So we always, with uh, our gas laws, always have to remember to convert this to Kelvin. All right? So... Kelvin is 273 plus degrees Celsius, so 273 plus 27 
is going to be 300 kelvins. So our T1 is 300. B2, what will the volume be? That's what we're solving for at 150 degrees Celsius. So 150 plus 273 is 423. So 423 kelvins. All right, so we're solving for V2. So V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Well, if we multiply both sides times T2, cancel. All right, this times T2. Excellent. So we end up with V2 equals V1 T2 over T1. Now we can plug stuff in. V1, 6 liters. T2, 423K. 423 kelvins, that's 6.T1, 300 kelvins. Alright, so our kelvins cancel and we end up with just liters, which is volume that we want. And we plug that into a handy dandy calculator. 6 times 423 divided by 300. And we get 8.46 liters. Nice and easy. All right, next, Gay-Lussac's law. That states that as the temperature of an enclosed gas increases, so as the temperature increases, the pressure increases if the volume is kept constant. So we would need a non-flexible container. So since they're both going up together, that is directly proportional, giving us the graph of a straight line. As temperature goes up, pressure goes up. As temperature goes down, pressure goes down. All right, if a gas is cooled from 323 kelvins to 273.15 kelvins and the volume is kept constant, what final pressure would result if the original pressure was 750 millimeters of mercury? And this is just another type of uh, unit for pressure. All right. So, here's our formula, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So, I have my P1 equals T1 equals P2 equals T2 equals pressure 1. The original pressure, 750, so 750 millimeters mercury from 323 to 273. So, this is my T1. 323. This is my T2. 273.15. What would the final pressure be? Boom. All right. So I have P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And I'm solving for P2. So I multiply both sides by T2. They cancel out here, and I have P2 equals P1 T2 over T1. P1, 750. T2, 273.15 kelvins. All over T1, 323.0 kelvins. My kelvins cancel. I'm left with a unit of pressure which is what I want and when I plug this in I get 750 times 273.15 divided by 323 and I get 634.2 so it's equal to 634.2 millimeters of mercury. Now let's think. The gas was cooled, so the temperature went down, so my pressure went down, and that makes sense. All right, so you're not going to really have to use those laws specifically by themselves, because what we're going to do in Regents Chemistry is utilize what's called the combined gas law. All right, so the combined gas law is where the relationship among pressure, temperature, and volume can all be expressed together in one occasion. 
And this formula is P1 V1 over T1 is equal to P2 V2 over T2. And you don't even have to memorize it because it's on the reference table. Okay, so let's give this an example. What is the volume of gas at two atmospheres and 200 kelvins if its original volume was 300 liters at 0 0.250 atmosphere and 400 kelvins? So now we have all of them in the mix. So we have to say P1 equals V1 equals T1 equals P2 equals V2 equals T2 equals. All right, P1, pressure 1, so it's the original was 0 0.250 atmospheres. Original volume, 300 liters. The original temperature, 400 kelvins. All right, what is the volume? So we're solving for volume at two atmospheres, 2.00 atm, and 200 kelvins. 200.0 kelvins. All right, so we have P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2, and we are solving for V2. So if we multiply this side by T2 over P2, and we multiply this side by T2 over P2, T2's cancel, V2's cancel. We end up with P2, which is what we need. Ah! I'm sorry, I canceled out the wrong one. We end up with V2. V2. See what happens when you're not careful? V2 equals T2 P1 V1 over P2 T1. Now we can plug in all these crazy numbers. T2, 200 Kelvins, 2. P1, 0.25 atmospheres, 0 0.250 atm. V1, 300 liters. Over, it's a lot. P2, two atmospheres, 2.00 atm. T1, 400 kelvins. Let's see, kelvins cancel. Atmospheres cancel, and I'm left with liters. Awesome. So now I can just do some math. 200 times 0.25 times 300 divided by 2 divided by 400, and I'm left with 18.75. Let's look at significant figures. 3, 4, 4, 3, up. So the lowest number is 3, so that's really... 18.8 liters. All right, we will be practicing a bunch of these at school over the next couple of days with uh, me here there to help you. So you'll get used to these fairly quickly. That seems like a lot when we're filling all these T's and P's, but as you practice and work through it methodically, it ends up being not so bad at all. All right, as always, if uh, you need to go back, go back and watch different parts again, and I will see you guys in school.